Our first introduction to Lando Calrissian came in The Empire Strikes Back, where he's the administrator of this facility known as Cloud City over Bespin, home to a colony for mining tabonic gas, which could be used to boost weapon power as a hyperdrive coolant or various other purposes. Throughout the expanded universe, though, Lando engaged in several other business ventures with varying success, and which we're going to be covering today in another video inspired by my ongoing reread of Young Jedi Knights. Lando's earliest ventures were as a gambler and a smuggler, beginning his illegal gambling career while skipping school at the age of 17. These parts of his early career and adventures with a droid named Vuffy Ra tend to be covered by The Adventures of Lando Calrissian, a set of three novels set before the events of the original trilogy. We'll probably talk more about those and his gambling adventures in more detail in a different video. As he gained success as a gambler, though, he started to invest in other businesses, and fairly commonly began to lose his investments in those business ventures, or even win entire businesses directly through his gambling. Two of his earliest investments before gaining Cloud City were in Barubian mines in the Borgo system, which quickly went belly up, and a used starship lot on Nar Shaddaa. Around three years before the Battle of Yavin, or BBY, he donated the vast majority of his inventory at the used starship lot to other outlaws to use in the Battle of Nar Shaddaa, between various smugglers and pirate factions in the Empire. The battle left most of his ships in ruins, and Lando, as a result, sold off 90% of his stake in the lot to a friend named Roa, losing much of his original investment. He had been hoping to participate in a Sabacc tournament six months later at Cloud City, however he could not afford the 10,000 credit entry fee, and was forced to return to running cargo on the Millennium Falcon in the Centrality, in which he did not really excel. Through a combination of good luck and other misadventures involving Vuffy Ra, sorcerers with grudges, and space manta rays which we'll cover in something more biographical, Lando was able to turn around the struggling ship lot on Nar Shaddaa with his 10% stake, and earn enough credits to guarantee his entry into the Cloud City Sabacc tournament. This tournament would not be the major stroke of fortune he'd hoped for, however. In the end, he lost everything including his ship, the Millennium Falcon, to Han Solo, and requested a small one-time loan of 1500 credits from his old friend. Han obliged, and Lando continued on the gambling circuit, turning that into hundreds of thousands of credits. The stroke of luck that Lando had been waiting for came soon after the Battle of Yavin, when he returned to a casino on Bespin and beat the administrator of Cloud City, Dominic Raynor, in yet another game of Sabacc, gaining himself the title of Baron Administrator. He excelled in his new role, successfully navigating local politics and even galactic rebellions, keeping operations running smoothly until the events of Episode 5 drew him in the rebellion against the Empire. He continued to run Cloud City until ultimately losing it himself in yet another game of Sabacc, this time to Jabba the Hutt's father, Zorba. In the periods after the Battle of Endor, Lando engaged in several different ventures, to the point that he basically got a new one with every series of books he appeared in. One of his first ventures after losing Cloud City was a theme park space station called the Hologram Fun World, an objectively terrible name. During the Thrawn trilogy, around nine years after Yavin, he had acquired another mining operation on the planet Killen called Nomad City which was described in the books as a dreadnought cruiser on top of AT-ATs, but which the comics depicted slightly differently. The mining base had to keep moving around the planet to prevent the intense heat and radiation from the sun from destroying the operation, and it required special ships called shield ships to protect incoming and outgoing space traffic. Nomad City was, unfortunately for Lando, attacked by Thrawn, and although it was repaired, Lando again lost it in another Sabacc game. It seems like he learned his lesson after this, since I don't believe any of his other businesses were mentioned as being explicitly lost because he made poor gambling choices, but I wouldn't be surprised if someone mentions another one in the comments. With Palpatine's return in Dark Empire, Lando once again returned to active service as a general of the New Republic, hoping to use his financial resources to help the New Republic, and, in return, hoping that the New Republic would protect his own investments later. His next major business move was a little bit more unorthodox, and it was covered by the Corellian Trilogy. Specifically, he wanted to marry a rich heiress, invest his in-law's wealth, and hopefully inherit it all with his wife when her father died. All he needed to do was to find the right heiress. All I can really describe Lando's dating approach as with this is using LinkedIn as a galactic tinder. He hoped to use Luke when going to meet the candidates, of which he had identified 250, much to Luke's horror, as a way to impress them and convince them he was in with the powerful people of the New Republic. The back and forth between Luke and Lando about this in Ambush at Corelli is actually pretty great if you ever have a chance to read it. It includes passages like, Lando seemed a bit taken aback. Perhaps it had never entered his head that there was a woman alive who wouldn't want to marry him. This search led to a woman named Tendra Rassant, who fit the bill of rich heiress, and came from Sicoria in Corellian space. She proved to be a skilled businesswoman herself, and her family's wealth backed several of the pair's future business ventures. In 41 ABY, the two also had a son, whom they of course named Lando Jr. Their most notable venture after the Corellian insurrection was at Gem Diver Station, a Kruska gem mining facility over the gas giant of Yavin. 
Although they had many more minor mining ventures, the most successful business the two would come up with came in the form of Tendrando Arms, a weapons manufacturing company they founded during the later stages of the Yuuzhan Vong War. Their flagship product was a Yuuzhan Vong hunter droid, which proved highly effective on the battlefield. The company and its founders continued to prosper well into the later periods of the Legends novels, with Tendrando Arms keeping contracts with the New Republic and its successor state, the Galactic Alliance. They even designed the Nanny Droid, which was a mix of Yuuzhan Vong hunter and Nanny Droid technology, which looked after Ben Skywalker when he was young. That's going to do it for this look at Lando and Tendra's business ventures, though. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed researching this one. As one of the original characters, Lando features pretty prominently in all kinds of media, so you get a pretty wide variety of styles and tones of the stories. As always, if you have any suggestions or feedback, please leave it in the comments section. If you've enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like or subscribing so I can feel validated as a human being. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.